how in the world can we turn something like this, something that looks like a high-tech club ready for the zombie apocalypse, into a full-fledged arm for Claptrap? Let's find out. Hey everybody, how's it going? Brandon Bro here, and thank you for joining me. In this video, we are going to be expanding on what we built in the last video, which was this robotic actuator. Now, right now, it's not going to do a whole lot, but we can expand on it, add a couple more actuators and some tubes, and make it into a real robotic arm for Claptrap. Now, building Claptrap's arm is no easy task. I knew from the very beginning that this was going to be one of those parts that was going to give me some issues. Compared to a normal robotic arm, it is incredibly thin, so I was going to have to come up with something. The last video, we built a planetary gearbox to turn a NEMA 17 stepper motor into something more suitable for a robot by increasing its torque. To begin, I started a larger gearbox and some mounts to help tie everything together. I started with a shoulder joint because it was the absolute easiest. It had some space limitations, but compared to the elbow and the hand, it's cake. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on the shoulder joint. Now, really all this is gonna do is attach the larger actuator to the smaller one via bracket. This is gonna give Claptrap shoulder two degrees of freedom. We'll probably end up with four, maybe five, depending on how I designed the hand. But when you look at a typical robotic arm, they have six. In Claptrap's case, this is all we're going to need for him to have all the mobility of the arm that we need. So I'm going to attach that bracket to the larger actuator and then I partially disassembled the smaller actuator to get to the plate. Now this plate is going to sandwich the stepper motor to the bracket making sure that everything's held super nice and tight and I don't have to worry about it ever coming apart. And now that we have the shoulder joint situated, let's go ahead and <laughs> start dealing with this elbow joint. Because Claptrap's arm is pretty much a twig, I had to scratch my head for a moment. We can't use a gearbox like we did on the shoulder joint simply because they're just too big. Now, we could use something like pneumatics or hydraulics, but I'm not a real big fan of creating a whole nother system just for a couple of joints. So after a little bit of digging, I decided to just go straight back to basics and go with a servo motor. I found one with the highest torque and had a dual output. And this was important to make sure that that torque on that joint was going to be evenly distributed. This may or may not work, but I wanted to give it a shot and continue to press forward. And this is what it looks like all assembled, completely done. I won't bore you with the build part of this because it really was just a PVC end cap with a couple of holes suited for the brackets for the servo motor. The hardest part about this was actually feeding the extension wires down through to the other actuators. The next thing I had to add was a gripper or end effector for Claptrap's arm. I just made a incredibly simple single servo actuator and this is just a placeholder it's not reflective of what the end product will be so don't hate too much uh, it will get better but this is really just a placeholder for now all right so here comes the part of the build where if you are huge into cable management you may want to fast forward a little bit because this is absolutely insane on the right hand side we have the Arduino Uno and on the left hand side we have the Bluetooth module which is going to receive signals from our Android app and then two of the stepper motor drivers in the middle here. Now these stepper motors and that elbow joint so that higher torque servo motor require more voltage so I have a separate power rail on the right hand side and then to drive the stepper motor drivers and the Bluetooth module, I have a rail on the left being fed from the Arduino. Now that's it in a nutshell. Obviously there's a lot more going on here, um, but really it's just a matter of sending signals, receiving signals from the different components. Let's go ahead and get this up and running, the arm mounted on Claptrap and see how it goes.
All right, so here we are. Claptrap's arm is fully extended out to his left. And we're just gonna try some test moves. So let's go ahead and close the gripper. Open it. All right, and then I'm gonna start with the upper shoulder just because right now it has the least amount of torque on that particular one, I guess. So let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, let's try forward. It is not liking that right now. So I'm gonna go like this and see if helping it out does anything. go okay okay so obviously not enough torque but we will go on to the other joint see if that one can do anything yeah doesn't like that so Probably still having an issue with the amount of torque. And of course, going down, gravity's helping out. Oh, it worked that time. So we'll go forward again. All right. So in theory, all the joints would be working really well if there was enough torque. Uh, let's try the last joint, which is the elbow. This one's a little scary um, because I have a feeling it's going to go really fast and potentially break something. So we'll try it out. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, geez. That is ridiculously fast. All right. I'm going to have to put <laughs> some delay in there, but yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna move it again because I'm really afraid it's gonna break something. <laughs> All right, so we have a partially working claptrap arm. Now that's due to the obvious fact that we don't have enough torque at those shoulder joints. And this is nothing that's really unexpected for me because I didn't really do any calculations in the beginning, such as moments of inertia to help me get that ballpark number that I was gonna need. Torque for this project is going to be really important because I don't want Claptrap to, in this case, just hold his arm out. I need him to be able to lift things up. In addition to that, balancing robots are not entirely perfect. Sometimes they do fall down, especially Claptrap. So in that event, I want Claptrap to be able to pick himself back up so he can start balancing again. A couple of key points I want to hit on though. Number one is the speed of the joints. Now, obviously our elbow didn't have any problem with that. It went ridiculously fast. Uh, I'm gonna have to put some delay in there, but our shoulder joints moved slower than I would like. There's a couple of ways that we can rectify that, and that is one, either by increasing the RPM of the motor, or two, by reducing the reduction ratio. So right now I am running a approximately like 38 to one ratio. Now, if I were to drop that down to a 20 to one, it would move faster. But the trade-off with that is it would move faster, but it would lose that torque. So I'm gonna have to do some weighing and balancing pros and cons to come up with the perfect motor and gearing ratio for that. Number two is back drivability. Now, right now I am using the servo motor to drive the actuator. In this case, you can see Claptrap's arm isn't moving whatsoever. That's because any kind of torque applied to that actuator isn't going to be force fed back through the motor. And in the instance that Claptrap does fall, I don't want him to be super stiff like a scarecrow and just and break something. I want there to be some flexibility in the system. Therefore, those actuators need to be able to give and have that back drive ability. Number three is encoders. 
Encoders help us determine exactly where that motor and actuator are at any given point in time. Right now, because I don't have any, if my stepper motor misses a step, like it did, the program will think that the arm is in one position when in reality, it's in another. And that could cause ca catastrophic failure and just not having the arm where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna have to come up with some way to add an encoder to this system. Lastly, is the materials. So I'm using PVC right now, and that's due to the fact that it's so cheap and it's easy to work with. Ultimately, I would like to use something like carbon fiber tubes because they're stronger, they're lighter, and therefore reducing the amount of torque I would need to apply to each one of those joints. But overall, I think this did a really good job of proving the concept that Claptrap's arm can be made. It doesn't look exactly like it right now, per the game, but because we were able to get that servo motor in the elbow joint and the gripper at the end, the shoulder is working to an extent, it proves to me that it can be done and with a little bit of modification such as maybe changing out the kind of actuators or gearing and adding encoders, we'd be able to make the system much more relatable to the character in Borderlands. That's gonna do it for this video, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you wanna stay up to date on this build, particularly the next video that might include some claptrap balancing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the alerts. And as always, until next time, take care.